Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel for another figure unboxing and review. Today we are taking a look at the Lightning Collection Hasbro Zord Ascension Program Dino Megazord. Now I picked mine up at Big Bad Toy Store, link in the description below. And when down there, I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button, bell icon, and join button. That way you are notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on my channel. Now this is one box that I may have a hard time throwing away. The box art is really, really cool. You have a over shell or an outer shell here with the MMPR lightning bolt uh, cut out. On the outside of the outer shell or the outer shell itself, you have single line drawings of the Megazord. You have the Z symbol, Zord Ascension Project. It's the Mighty Morphin Dino Megazord. Plastic free packaging from Hasbro. And then under in the inner shell, you have an artistic rendition of the Dino Megazord head. And on the side here, you have a comic book style artwork of the actual Dino Megazord. On the opposite side, you have pictures of the individual Megazords. On the back of the box here, you have a picture of the actual Dino Megazord itself in action, tank mode. You have little Monopoly style figures here, red, pink, black, blue, and yellow. And here you have pictures of all the Rangers in their respective Zords. So there's little cockpit Monopoly figures, which is awesome as well. No detail in, in any of these, but overall the out, outside packaging looks great. Taking this outside shell off, we are greeted with that same artistic rendition of the Dino Megazord head. You have the Dino Megazord fighting with Goldar. This is awesome. I did not expect to see something like this. This is a sticker inlaid into the top of the box. It's peeling a little bit, but still, it's awesome. They didn't have to do anything like this. All right, and here, essentially for each Ranger, you have a picture of the Ranger's head, side profile the actual coin itself, and the side profile of the Zord head, right? So that's that's pretty cool. Packaging on this is great. I mean, they went above and beyond on the presentation of everything. I mean, they didn't have to do anything like this. They could have done the standard clamshell approach that most other companies would have done and do. But no, they went above and beyond for this. This packaging is actually surprisingly good. All right, so here are all the accessories that it comes with. It's not much. You have your instruction manual here. Important. Looks like this thing can do a lot. A lot of different configurations, a lot of different parts. You have your pterodactyl feet. You have your open hands. So I assume what comes on the actual Megazord is a sword gripping hands, but you have open, relaxed, kind of like Kung Fu Haya hands. You have all of the Monopoly figure rangers. They're all in different fighting poses. And then you have your very, very shiny sword. And this thing is very shiny. It's like vacuum metalized or something. Um, it is very lightweight. It is a very lightweight plastic. You have these gold detailings, which are also, again, like gold chrome. And the whole thing is just chromed goodness. Straight out of the box, we have the T-Rex Zord. His hip joints are ratcheted. His tail, oh, his tail comes apart apparently. All right, now in terms of articulation, his mouth opens pretty wide. Head can go up and down. About that much, that's really high, actually. You go down that low. I think if you go any higher, yeah, you, the, the actual head and side starts to impede. But it, it goes pretty high. No neck swivel, no shoulder joints, but you do have standard T-Rex arms, little tiny T-Rex arms. There is a little bit of play in and out. So you can go up and down. And there's a hinge at the elbow. So that's as straight as it will go. And that's how bent it will go. It's actually a decent range of motion there for a T-Rex. There is some waist articulation as well. So this is him standing as straight up as he can. This is him as bent as he can go. His legs, they, wow. So they can go out pretty far. His legs, I mean, he can, homeboy can almost do the splits. I'm very surprised how articulated these are. These are all lightweight plastic, but man, these look good and they're articulated very well. Legs also have a joint here. Spin all the way around. Knee joint, I mean, look how far the knees can come out. The knees can come out that far. He can kick his own ass. Foot articulation is really good. A lot forward, a lot backward. Yeah, knee articulation is ridiculous. He also has openings on his shin. Probably the Megazord connection pieces there. Hidden, but that, you know, smart place to hide them. 
This is impressive. Yeah, I feel like this thing, just because it doesn't look fully accurate, has been getting a lot of uh, negativity, but I am impressed with how good this looks. We're now up close and personal. I wanted to show you the head, all the sculpted in detail there. Tiny teeth. You can see Red Ranger in the cockpit there. Decent chest detail, shoulder detail. There's the back. They could have just left this like you know completely flat black plastic with no sculpted in detail, but they didn't. They chose to go above and beyond and add these pieces and it just adds an extra dimension. It kind of separates it from the Bandai one. It makes it look and feel premium even though it's lightweight and not, not die cast. See the hip skirts or hip panels, nice paint overlay, the tail. Mastodon, another hitter of a design. This thing feels the heaviest out of all of them. In terms of articulation, head is completely fixed. Does not move whatsoever. His legs are fixed. His front legs are completely fixed. Do not move whatsoever. Back legs. Okay, so there is a little bit of articulation in his back legs. I'm gonna go front and back, forward about that much. Backwards about that much. And it's the same for both. No other means of articulation. So this one's articulation is not great. Check out the detail on this Mastodon. The red spots have added dimension. Panel lining for the yellow and black throughout. You have a lot of detail throughout the feet. Nice paint. So everything, well the upper seems to be, like most of it is, you know, black plastic with painted on yellow or red. Painting is done really well. I mean, you can see some minor quality control issues. But overall, I mean, it looks great. Complaining at this point when they went through this much would be a bit nitpicky because, I mean, look at all that. They even put lines in the caboose. Looks good. Get into the Triceratops, another one that I don't expect to have great articulation. Starting with the head. Head goes up that much. Goes down completely flat. Wheels do not rotate or anything. There's a little bit of back and forth to the head. And spin or turn a little bit. If the Triceratops wants to get wide on you. It gets wide on you. These parts come out, extend out. And you have more even hidden paint. If you didn't pull these out, you would never have seen these black painted details there. You have your blasters back here. Oh, okay, so this blaster part comes up and these two blaster joints here do articulate as one piece. Instead of you wanted to blast, you could blast easily and obviously the foot would come out like this in Megazord mode still like this Triceratops seems like he may have been one of the more overlooked ones in terms of details but I mean he is just super blocky to begin with they did even add all these details tracks like tank tracks here you have white and black paint over the blue black paint on top nice silver metallic paint you have a translucent red piece here which looks really good. The silver paint looks great. I mean, you can see the difference between the gray plastic, so that's gray cast plastic, and here's silver paint over the top. Gray and black paint throughout. You see the yellow and white paint over the blue head, white and red paint over the eyes. Yeah, so none of none of the individual Zords were really overlooked. Now look at this. They didn't have to do all that. I don't think any other release of this has done all that. You have vents, exhaust ports. I don't know if it sounds like I'm raving, guys, but I am very impressed with this. I was expecting much, much less, especially from watching other people's reviews. I was expecting much less from this. Getting into the Sabertooth Tiger, out of the box, comes like this. 
legs down. So in terms of articulation, saber tooth claws go up and down. They seem to be, they're not joint, they're independent. They go up and down. The jaw opens and closes. The head is on a ball joint, down that much, up that much. There is some side to side movement there. The whole thing obviously has to come up for when it's in Megazord mode. But pretty good. The combination of the neck articulation here, plus that the ball joint provides decent articulation. Oh, and there's like a mid body articulation too. Side to side. Up and down, pretty good. The legs move pretty freely. The only thing that would stop these is here, or if you hit the head. You also have some elbow joints here, then go all the way like that, and go all the way back that far. Now let's check the lower body. You have the wheels here with the legs tucked away. You have both legs here, the legs can go back that much which is a decent amount actually look at that we could do a full-on look at that all right so both legs articulate like that knee joints this one's really stiff the knee joints really good as well bend them they can crouch and then here's the tail the tail just in and out. A saber tooth tiger is probably one of the most, one of the more organic shapes. So it doesn't have as many of the panel lining details as the others, but it's it's not lacking compared to other releases of this. I mean, starting at the top of the head, you have red paint, white paint, black paint over the yellow, red eyes, black nose. All his fangs are silver. The neck has detail. You have the tires here, red paint detail, silver paint on the actual legs looks great. Great job with the paint matching for them. Go into the body, and good job with the paint. I mean, you have red, black, blue, and white paint over the yellow body, silver paint for the back wheel. Multiple wheels here. Now, similar to the Triceratops, you also have translucent red jewel sort of thing there. Getting into the pterodactyl, this is actually really cool too. You have a translucent piece here with the hexagonal pattern underneath it in gray. That's very different. You have some articulation here. So this is the pterodactyl feet, theoretically, right? Attach the two pieces here. Goes all the way up and goes back that far. I mean, I've never seen any Megazord articulate that before. Taking the wings out. wings splayed out a little angel chest and the head head is really loose wow not expecting that that's the only the biggest QC besides the saber tooth tiger knee that I've seen so far is that's pretty loose giggity giggity otherwise pretty cool this is probably the least exciting zord out of all of them to be honest with you I mean it always has been <laughs> for any release of this but they did add another dynamic piece, which has not been done before, to my knowledge. Solo Chikogan probably did it, but I'm not sure. In terms of details for the pterodactyl, I mean, they did all they could, it appears. You have the hexagonal pattern under the translucent plastic on the chest. Panel lining here that's non-existent in other iterations of this Megazord, or this Zord. Feet with blue paint, yellow. I mean, this looks great. Again, the added dimension and detail. I don't think it's been done before, besides maybe the Solo Chikogan. That's the only one that I could think of that might have this. You have yellow paint, blue paint over the red plastic. All right, now let's do a first build. First things first, take off Mastodon head. Next thing is to pop off the back two pieces. Extend legs out or pull these up. Extend legs out, open it up, rotate. Mastodon. 
feet. Boom, so the back, good to go. Next we have T-Rex. So first thing first, we're gonna open these up, pull these out. Okay, cool, got the two little nubs out. Close these red parts back up. And it says to pull out the hips. Push these back and down. All right, so I'm gonna stick straight out like that. Pull this one up. Triceratops on the right hand side. Let's fold this guy up. Imagine, imagine the feet would go like that. Next step, take the back here. Put the hips up, ratchet hips. That's looking pretty good so far. Boom, let's get rid of the T-Rex head. There's our face shield back around. All right, and then the pterodactyl. All right, so here's full on Megazord mode. Getting to the articulation of the actual Megazord itself. The legs are definitely heavy. I mean, these are ratcheted joints there, but if I let go of the legs, see this one came down one. The legs are pretty heavy, which is good. I mean, it's gonna be more stable. Starting with the head, um, you have a ball joint. That's crazy for a Megazord head. Right, you have a ball joint in Megazord head. Side, up, down, shoulders, I think they rotate all the way around, but do not go up or down much, just there. They're limited by the shoulder pads. There is a bicep swivel. There is single jointed elbow. Um, the wrist is on a ball joint. Waist, you have some up and down movement. You have rotation as well. So, I mean, you're limited by ter the pterodactyl piece here. It'll hit on this hip piece here and pop off. But outside of that, yeah, you do have waist rotation and hinge forward and back. Now you do have ratcheted hips, you kick forward that much. Can't go back much at all. You do have a thigh swivel, single jointed knee, goes back that much. You can go forward, can essentially kick all the way forward. It looks kind of funky with the uh, T-Rex foot there, but you can kick pretty far forward. Feet here, you can see the saber tooth, a decent amount of articulation. Same thing with the Triceratops, decent amount of articulation in the ankle there. I mean, look at the detail of it. Paint is pretty great. You have all these translucent parts throughout. You have panel lines, 144 scale. It's relatively big. All these little components, I mean here, the T-Rex arms under, they integrate so well, so you can't even really tell they're T-Rex arms, they just seem like they're part of the actual Megazord. You have these components here that come from the Mastodon, where it's yellow, it's painted very well. Same thing throughout, I mean again, man, these panel lining is kind of throwing me off how detailed and nice it looks. It's, it's similar to a Gundam. I imagine that if you took a panel liner to this, you can get this thing looking even better. Really impressed by how premium it is. All right, and here's how they stack up in a direct comparison. On the left hand side, you see we have the Bandai Legacy Collection version. It is pretty accurate to the show overall in terms of styling. It does have stickers all over the place. Articulation is pretty poor, but it does have die cast, which is a plus. It does look okay as is, which is good because you won't be able to get it to pose any much more than that. But that being said, it is limited and it does have stickers to it. That one's more of a nostalgia approach. On the far right, you have the previous release from Hasbro, which is I think the $60 more toy version, more kid-friendly version. That one in general, it is decently articulated, but it's super cheap. It falls apart a lot. It uh, utilizes stickers. It is not particularly well done. It lacks a lot. It leaves a lot to be desired. That one's perfect for three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds to destroy. The one in the middle is more or less the point of this video. That is the Zap Hasbro Dino Megazord. It is a true one to 144 scale. It is massive compared to the other two. It has a lot more details. It's not fully accurate to the show in terms of its styling, but it does have a better shelf presence than either of them. It is bigger 
It has more panel lining. It has paint instead of stickers. It has mixed media. All the color details you see on the Bandai release, the Legacy Collection version, are stickers that will eventually peel off. Whereas the Hasbro version, it is paint. And on cheaper one you see, I mean, there's really nothing there. It's the bare minimum. So when you start to factor in things like articulation, sculpt details, painting, mixed media, overall shelf presence, in my opinion, the latest release from Hasbro is a no-brainer. It is readily available. You can't find the Legacy Collection for retail anymore. The run on the far right is perfect if you're a kid or if you have kids that you want to let play with it. Otherwise, it's not a real true collectible. And I think what Hasbro has done here is, is good. I mean, would I have preferred die cast? Sure, but that probably would have increased the price. That's probably the only knock on it is that it does not have absolutely premium materials, but it does have excellent panel lining, excellent sculpted in details, excellent articulation. So it is a no brainer. In my opinion, it's a no brainer. All right, pick up the Hasbro Zap Dino Megazord. You're gonna be happy. I mean, it's about $165 before tax. I don't know what the prices are for the Legacy Bandai version, but it's been a few years since it came out. It's a bit harder to get, um, especially new. Um, if you do have the Soul of Chikogan one, which I do not have, then you have the best of the best. There's no reason to spend any additional money on any of these. That's it. That's the Grail version of this. But yeah. Wrapping up on the Hasbro Zord Ascension program, Dino Megazord. Now I thought that I knew what to expect this release, but the subtle and not so subtle differences make this a refreshing release and it does excite me for the future of Hasbro releases. Hasbro could have rinsed and repeated the Bandai release and made a collectible gray diecast Megazord that looks so accurate with limited articulation, but no. Hasbro chose to make a one of a kind, premium, lightweight, posable Megazord with decent articulation. Overall, if you're a Power Rangers fan and you do not have the Soul of Chikogan Megazord, I highly recommend it. This is not as premium looking as the Bandai release in terms of materials, but what it lacks in materials, it makes up in presentation, uniqueness, articulation, and shelf presence. This one will be staying on my shelf. Now, I got mine at Big Bad Toy Store, link in the description below. When down there, I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button, bell icon, and join button. That way you are notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on my channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.